Hi, this is your host Aptin Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Steve Winterfeld, advisory CISO at Akamai. Steve, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. I always enjoy our discussions. And today we are going to talk about the state of segmentation report. But before we go deeper into the report, I just want to understand or explain for our viewers what do you mean by, or what do we mean by segmentation when it comes to environments? So first, I always encourage people uh, to have something that can pass an audit. So NIST 800-207, uh, Zero Trust breaks out a great description of micro-segmentation. But in general, let's talk about what we want to do with micro-segmentation. We're, we're trying to build zones of trust. So if one zone is compromised, our whole network isn't compromised. So, for instance, if, if you process credit cards, you belong under PCI. So everything that processes credit cards would be in one zone. Or you might have a, a network with a production zone and an administrative zone. So if somebody broke into your administrative zone, they wouldn't impact your production zone. Or I always have my, my labs or my innovation centers segmented because there's crazy stuff going on over there and you don't want it to impact the larger, you know, and, and of course there's a couple ways to do this. The first is internal firewalls. I've tried that. I have PTSD from trying that. It's very complicated. Uh, and we'll talk in this report, almost 89% say micro segmentation, which I tend to take towards agent based or software based segmentation gives you more fidelity. But again, we're really trying to minimize impact of any incident. Can you also talk a bit about what are the efforts, not only from Akamai, but you see industry-wide, and also there are a lot of you know, federal agencies as well, to understand uh, the state of segmentation? So I think segmentation has become very popular right now as uh, one of the pillars under zero trust. And, and Zero Trust is, is, again, you know, it's been around for over 10 years. We're still building towards it. But Zero Trust is that concept where, you know, we see in some of the reports, uh, a lot of those are coming through stolen credentials or, or getting access to somebody's identity. So, you know, that access is the first part of Zero Trust. The second part of Zero Trust is that segmentation. And, and I think the one threat that's really driving this is ransomware. So, you know, 15 years ago, cyber incidents were putting companies out of business. But now with ransomware, we've seen companies never recover from an attack. We've seen major financial impacts, what we would call a material impact. With an increase in the last year of 143% for ransomware attacks globally, and they're causing downtime, data loss, brand damage. It is just huge. And so one of the things I like to think about is, you know, how are we able to, to address this rampant? And that's by quick detection. All of my peers are talking about minimizing dwell time, you know, preventing it from spreading all the way through your network. And, and so that's why I think you're seeing this huge increase in paying attention to micro segmentation. When we look at micro segmentation, can you also talk about the benefits that teams, organizations face, which go beyond just security? It could also be about, you know, helping teams move faster, increase their velocity, increase their efficiency, increase the performance. So the thing I love about micro segmentation is the visibility it gives me. So I now know where data flows are going. I know where my data is. Uh, in, in these hybrid environments where I have, you know, some aspects of my network are in the cloud, others are in SaaS providers. I still have some legacy stuff in a data center. You know, unless you're a new, brand new company that, that kind of natively started in the cloud, and even then, you know, it's, it's distributed. So, I like the visibility because I can tell where my data is, where my data flows are going, if I have choke points, where I have risk. And, and it really allows me to do some analysis and investigation of, of what's going on with my data. 
So I think the real up part of this is, is having a better view and understanding of your overall network. Now, let's talk about uh, this report or ebook that you folks came out with. Uh, talk about the concept idea behind this report and what were some major findings. And as we, I always ask you, uh, there are some findings that you were expecting and there are some findings you're like, aha moment that, oh, wow, I was not even expecting that. First part is, you know, we went out and we surveyed over a thousand IT security professionals and leaders. And we talked to them about, you know, what's going on? Where are you seeing return on investment on security controls? And, and bottom line is most of these people are talking about you know, segmentation, what they're getting from it. 93% of our respondents say, you know, segmentation is critical to stopping large damaging attacks. Uh, within that, it was interesting though, that only 40% say that their zero trust journey to include segmentation has been fully defined and deployed. So again, Zero trust is a journey. We see people constantly moving towards it, never fully done. And then 89% said within segmentation, micro segmentation was the thing they were looking at. To answer the second part of your question, you know, how, how are people, um, actually go ahead and ask me, what are some of the issues people are having to have not fully deployed. What kind of awareness is there in terms of micro segmentation? It's fairly high. I think most of the people understand that uh, it is becoming uh, vital uh, to, to basically uh, be part of zero trust. Zero trust is almost universally understood. Uh, zero trust in its earlier stages was largely around access. And I think as people have gotten more mature, they're including a micro segmentation in it. And, you know, it's to the point where you kind of see it as, as a vendor buzzword. Uh, and whenever I see that, I think, you know, that's when the customers are talking about it, when suddenly you see the marketeers trying to include it in their language. Um, but, but beyond that indicator, I think truly we're seeing a return on investment, which is why it's becoming more popular. But are there any areas where you also see teams struggle or the challenges that they face in terms of micro segmentation? Yeah, when we say only 40% are done, there's a reason, you know. Uh, a lot of it is, you know, those 44% say they started it two years ago. So that's quite a long process. And, and what we're seeing those challenges are, First of all, is the lack of, of skills and expertise to do segmentation. You know, if, if you're, depending on which mode you're building in, it requires a lot of investigation because you don't want to impact production. If you put in a, a rule somewhere that blocks your operations, you know, that's, that's not a good day for security. The second is the performance bottlenecks. You know, if you're implementing this in a way that that everything has to come back to a security control, then you're building in latency. And latency is the last thing we want to be accused of here in security. So the architect of this has to be, be not bringing everything back to central firewalls, but distributing the control. And then the last is, you know, those compliance requirements. We mentioned PCI earlier. It's probably one of the most classic of, of a zone that has to be segmented. And so when you're thinking about compliance rather than security, I, I think it, it takes you in a different direction. And, and sometimes that's a more deliberate process than just integrating security. Earlier when we were talking about, you know, how do you look at segmentation, you said, you know, it kind of gives you visibility. Uh, and let's just talk about some of the uh, jargons, terms, practices. Uh, observability is... Uh, you know, very well known practice these days. How do you see micro segmentation playing in these, you know, broader practices, jargons, terms that we use? So I think first of all, you know, um, the difference between segmentation and micro segmentation, um, you know, we have no governing body defining those terms. I think generally when people talk about segmentation, it's more that legacy firewalls. When you talk about micro segmentation, you're getting more down at the data flow level, work process level. And so where do you want that visibility? Do you want it at, at the larger, okay, this is PCI, or do you want it down at the server where 
we can see the processes within the server and we can see this one process is actually you know going out to the internet and so so that gives us visibility to not just a zone but down into the workflow so that's where i think the difference of micro segmentation and why so many people like it is your situational awareness is so much more acute and you know how do we then pull that back for those who were been in this game for a long time we remember you know the first generation of a security operations center with those alerts scrolling off the screen you know we're much more mature now how do you build that visualization in so you can intuitively work with those data flows and, and gain understanding from it and that's where you get situational awareness in my opinion what kind of recommendations do you have for teams and organizations so all my examples, I was really giving like maybe two zones. And, and I think that's one of the things that we've discovered in our survey was, you know, only 30% of the organizations had more than two zones. And, and we found that the real payoff comes when you have, we, we developed a template of six critical areas. The first is your critical business assets. So I have those in a segment. The second is your critical apps, then your public facing apps, your domain controllers, your servers and your endpoints. And when you develop those six zones, what you end up having is you're going to be 11 hours faster when you detect a threat. And so rather than 15 hours to stop something like ransomware, you would be done in four. Or if there was a zero day uh, and, you know, something like log4j that you saw movement, you could limit that movement in, in three hours versus 14 hours on average. So by building out those segmentation zones, you have a rapidly quicker way to respond to threats. Last time we also talked about the, uh, you know, kind of seriousness of ransomware. Talk a bit about uh, the importance of, you know, kind of discovery versus prevention when it comes to ransomware? So, you know, ransomware um, used to have a, a one phase attack, come in and encrypt your data. And so after you have your initial access, then you have to, to spread throughout the network and encrypt the entire network, uh, entire production network, encrypt the backups, and, and truly then you're gonna have the kind of impact where you can just demand the ransom. Um, and then we saw a second generation where you now have people coming in and exfilling that data and then calling and saying, if, if you don't pay this ransom, we're gonna put your data on the internet of all your customers. And we've saw criminal groups going to those customers and telling the customers, hey, we stole your data from this vendor. You need to go tell that vendor to pay us or we're gonna put your, your information out there. We even saw a criminal group file an SEC complaint, Security Exchange Commission complaint because they had done a ransomware attack and that company hadn't reported it within the required amount of time. And so we're seeing this constant going on, but what that means is you've got a window of opportunity. From the moment they get in, they have to spread laterally. And that's where your visibility of micro segmentation is going to detect it. And then they have to exfil that data and things like secure web gateway and, and watching data flows of micro segmentation are going to detect that data being stolen. And so that's what we're looking for is that window to interrupt their attack before it fully deploys. Earlier, we were also talking about zero trust. How does segmentation or micro segmentation fit in or play into building a zero trust strategy? Zero trust is about ensuring that we have visibility of it. And, and if you go to the NIST framework, there are, are many different ways to implement a zero trust framework. But at a very high simple level, I think the two most important are controlling access and then minimizing the blast zone or minimizing the impact. 
And so a reminder, zero trust is designed to protect your employees and your corporation. And so it is protecting the operations of your network. Earlier we were talking about some of the challenges that teams face. Let's, can we look at it from two different perspectives? You know, I love talking about cultural impact, but also look at the technolo technological impact uh, that teams face. Uh, if you can look at both of these aspects. So I think the technology comes in a couple ways is, first of all, you know, partnering or choosing an architecture that is able to be deployed in, in a fairly quick amount of time. Um, you know, we talked about earlier, you know, people have been trying to deploy segmentation for two years. Well, my network changes every six months. And, you know, if I'm trying to, to implement micro segmentation on a changing network, I want to do that in a shorter span of time. And so going to an architecture like, uh, you know, agent based, you can deploy that much faster, lower effort. Uh, so I think on the technology side, going with a project that you can rapidly be successful in is probably the architecture I would want. And also going with a vendor that is going to help train me because we talked about that skill set challenges. So train my people, help me architect a solution, help me implement it. I think those are critical. The second part is cultural. You know, as, as we talk to this, uh, maybe I have somebody on the firewall team that feels threatened by micro segmentation because, you know, they, they say, oh, the firewalls are going away. Well, the firewalls aren't going away. The external firewalls are still needed. But we need to then, you know, talk to that culture about retraining our people so they have a new skill set, not be threatened by a new skill set, but have a second skill set. You know, that culture of constant development, of constant training, improving our team. I think that's where we get our high retention from as well. Can you also talk about the role of the vendor ecosystem? Of course, players like Akamai to help these teams. So yeah, I mean, uh, I think more and more of my peers that I talk to, the other CISOs are, are looking to do vendor consolidation. They're looking to partner with vendors that can offer expertise or even uh, managed services as it's getting harder and harder to find the right skill sets. So, you know, uh, I, I, there was a report out that said, you know, a, a company of 500 people may have uh, 66 security controls. Um, I, I now as a CISO, I'm doing vendor management more than, you know, program management. And so I think that's where we see uh, consolidation. Uh, Akamai is a well-known, uh, platform. We have uh, DDoS, we have internal, we have micro segmentation, we have API protection, we have our, our web application firewall. So I think that's one of the benefits of working with some of these larger organizations uh, is, is getting to that consolidated fewer vendors. What advice do you have for teams so that not only they can build the right culture that we talked about, but also they can also get most value out of the tools that are available to them. You know, it is interesting. Um, if you're in a culture of high transformation, which most of us are, our businesses are constantly transforming. What, if we're not careful, we fall into the trap of complexity and, and we're getting more and more complex and accruing more and more technical debt. And so I would move towards a culture of simplicity, of the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid, uh, where as we move towards innovation and transformation, we think about how to do it in a way that doesn't introduce unnecessarily complexity. We keep track of our technical debt and continue to reduce that. Where do you have two tools doing the similar thing? Where do you have three, you know, in the attack sequence? Where do you have four tools looking for data being expelled and no tools looking for lateral movement? And where can we shift our tools to have balance to cross that detection platform? Uh, and, and I think those are kind of the, the keys that I would focus on. 
Can you also talk about the resources that are available for teams? Of course, you folks came out with this report, this ebook, how people can get access to these resources. So, yeah, I think, you know, uh, there's a link associated with this, or if you just go out and Google uh, Akamai State of the Segmentation Report, uh, this is the second report, so make sure you get the one from this year. Uh, we also put out a number of reports called the State of the Internet Report uh, and blogs. We have a report in there on ransomware. It talks about threat trends. It's a great resource to partner with this. Um, but yeah, those would be my recommendations. Steve, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this report. Some great advices, great, of course, recommendation, great uh, suggestions there. Thanks for all those insights. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.